Target ticker TGT just hit its 52-week low after reporting earnings on November the 20th. They fell by 20.96% to $121.72. But they are not down only in the past 5 days, but over the past year they are down by 6.94% and over the past 5 years they are down by 14.17%. So today we want to figure out whether the market is just overreacting and opening an opportunity for us to buy target at a discount price. And to do this we will use our stock valuation spreadsheets where we will have a look at the essential 9 pillar analysis and calculate target's intrinsic value using our 4 valuation models. But before we get to that let's have a look at why target fell in the first place after reporting earnings. So first of all, Target said that it expects full year adjusted earnings per share to range from $8.30 to $8.90, which is lower than the $9 to $9.70 per share that it shared in August and below the $9.55 per share expected by analysts. The company also fell short of Wall Street's earnings per share estimate by 20%, which is its biggest miss in two years. And if we scroll down, we can see the earnings per share were expected at $2.30 and the reported were sitting at $1.85. So a big miss indeed. And the revenue was reported at $25.67 billion versus the $25.90 billion expected. So $23 million lower than the expected value. So now let's figure out whether this earnings miss is indeed a good reason for Target to be down by 20% in a single day. So after plugging in the ticker TGT into our stock valuation spreadsheets, right away we can see that Target is a dividend company with an above average yield of 3.68%, which gives them a dividend payout of $4.48 per share per year and a below 50% training free cash flow payout ratio of 44.32%. And for those of you who watch this channel frequently, know that I like the training free cash flow payout ratio to be below 50%, as in that case the company still has 50% of their free cash flow to invest back into the business, buy back shares off of the market and pay off their debt while increasing their dividend. So jumping to the 9 pillar analysis, we can see that it gives us a rating of 7 out of 9 for target with 2 out of the 9 pillars being in the red. But first let's have a look at the pillars that are currently sitting in the green. So first of all the 5 year PE ratio for target is sitting on average at 18.56 which is in the range we like to see. But if we have a closer look at the PE ratio we can see that target has actually been decreasing their PE ratio over the past 5 years which is something I very much like. We can see that they have been decreasing it at a rate of 1.37% every single year. Now the reason why I like the decrease in the PE ratio is because the company is essentially becoming more undervalued with investors paying less money for every dollar of the company's earnings. So the current PE ratio of target is sitting at 12.56 which means that an investor is paying $12.56 for every dollar of target's earnings. Now jumping back to the 9 pillars we can see that they also have a 5 year profit margin sitting above 10%, sitting at 28.12%, so that is in the green. We can also see that they have consecutive dividend growth of 11.56%, which is very decent indeed. But if we have a look at our dividend style, we can see that over the past 5 years they have been growing their dividends at a very high rate, but year over year they have only grown them by 1.38%, which is much lower than the average 11.56%. So this is something we have to take into account when plugging in our growth value for the dividend discount model. Now something I always love to see a company do is have increasing net income and increasing revenue. So if we have a look at these two pillars we can see that indeed Target has been increasing their revenue very nicely over the past 5 years and their income has been increasing as well. Not by that much but there is a very decent increase as well. Now something I want to point out is we can see an increase in net income we can see an increase in revenue growth. But if we have a look at the P ratio, that has actually been decreasing over the past five years, which tells me that the company probably has been overvalued between 2021 and the second half of 2022. But since then, the company was probably trading at a fair price and in the dips, it was probably trading undervalued as their P ratio was sitting low and they were growing their income. And now they might be in a similar undervalued situation. Now another thing I like about Target is that they have been decreasing their shares outstanding at a rate of about 2% every single year. And this is great as it means that you own a larger percentage of the company as there are less shares outstanding. 
And finally, the long-term liabilities over the 5-year free cash flow negative dividends to be sitting below 5. And for target, if we have a closer look, this is sitting at 1.15. And what this pillar essentially tells us is that the company generates enough free cash flow to pay off all their long-term liabilities while paying out their dividends so they don't get into trouble with debt. So currently target's ratio is sitting at 1.15 which means that they can pay off all their debt in about 6 years which is great. We can also see that they have been increasing their long-term liabilities at quite a high rate but over the past 2 years they haven't increased them at all so that is nice as well. So moving to the two pillars in the red. First, the increasing free cash flow. We can see that it is currently sitting at negative 106% every single year over the past five years. But if we have a look a little closer, we can see that actually since 2019, they have been increasing their free cash flow quite steadily until 2021. And then in 2022, their free cash flow was actually in the negative. But in 2023, they have increased it back to 3.8 billion. And year over year, they have increased it by another 19%. So actually, their free cash flow is growing quite nicely. And finally, the price to free cash flow to be below 21. And this is very similar to the PE ratio. But instead of earnings, we look at the free cash flow of the company. So if we have a closer look at this as well, we can see that again, 2022 was in the negative, And that's the reason why the average is sitting in the negative as well. Now, overall, it seems like 2022 wasn't a great year for Target. But otherwise, their price to free cash flow was sitting nice and low over the past five years. And currently, it's sitting at 14.77, which is in the range we like to see. So overall, things are looking quite nice with Target. They have low P ratio. They have a low price to free cash flow. They have increasing revenue, increasing free cash flow, increasing net income. Their profit margin is high. They have decreasing shares outstanding, low debt and consecutive dividend growth. Now, if you find these spreadsheets helpful and like to download them for your own personal use, you can do so at the link in the description. So now let's calculate their intrinsic value, first using the Grams formula advised. And here we basically take a look at the earnings per share of the company. So we take the 5 year earnings per share to be sitting at 9.46, the base PE sitting at 7, the 5 year earnings growth estimate, the growth rate multiplier, the average yield on AAA corporation bonds and the current yield on AAA corporation bonds and using the formula we get an intrinsic value of $189.64, so almost $190, which is 36% higher than the current trading price of the company. And now let's move to the second valuation model, the discounted cash flow model. And here we take the free cash flow over the past five years and calculate the average growth rate to be sitting negative 106%. But that is because of the year 2022. On average, it has been growing by about 2% every single year. So I will calculate the growth rate of 2% into the next 10 years. And by plugging in a discount rate at 7%, so the minimum return I want from target over the next years, I will calculate the present value of that future free cash flow. I will then sum all of that up, add cash and cash equivalent, subtract total debt and get an equity value which I divide by the shares outstanding and get an intrinsic value of $154.74 which is again higher than the current trading price of the company. Now the third valuation model is the multiples valuation where we compare target to its peers, so Walmart and Dollar General. We will take this company's current stock prices and divide by their earnings per share to get their P ratios. And notice that the P ratio of Walmart is much higher than the P ratio of Target, which already hints that Target might be undervalued compared to its competitor. Anyway, we will average out these P ratios to get an average P of 28.39, and we will multiply that by the current EPS of Target to get an intrinsic value of $275.12. But as we know, Target has adjusted their earnings per share range from $8.30 to $8.90. So as I want to be more conservative, I will plug in 8.5 for the earnings per share and we will still get an intrinsic value of $241.33, which is still higher than the current trading price. And finally, moving to the dividend discount model. And here we take the dividend payouts over the past five years and calculate the average growth rate to be sitting at 14.10%. Now, as we know, this year Target only increased their dividends by 1.38%. So if we take into that account, we can plug in a projected growth rate of 4% to be conservative. And by doing that, we will get an intrinsic value of $151.15. So now jumping to the ultimate valuation where we average out the four valuation models and get an intrinsic value of $184.21. 
which is 51.34 percent higher than the current trading price so even if i plug in a margin of safety of 20 percent we would still get an acceptable buy price at $147.37. So after going through target's valuation, going through the nine pillars and calculating its intrinsic value, it is quite safe to say that the market has probably overreacted. Now to be fully transparent, I added target to my personal portfolio in the 2023 dip and I might do the same now. And so if you did enjoy the valuation, let me know down in the comments which company you'd like me to evaluate next. And also make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really helps me out.